Good morning. Welcome to the Old Tech Sex Fair channel. I am without coffee this morning. <laughs> so, I already have a barometer of how my day is going to go. Anyhow, as I mentioned about a week ago, silver is going to crash. It has gone down about three or four dollars, down to twenty-one dollars and eighty cents. I do believe in the upcoming week or two, we're going to see it into the teens. That's what I believe. Am I talking bad about silver? Absolutely not. Once it goes down, that'd be a great buying opportunity to buy more silver for the same amount of money. That being said, don't worry about it. This is a good thing. Unless, unless you plan on selling your silver, then you're screwed. You might as well wait until it comes up again. Anyhow, I've been listening to the news, as I always do. And why do I keep repeating the news? Because we need to know why we're stacking silver. We need to know why we're preparing financially and whatnot. It does me no good, it does you no good, actually, for me to keep coming on, making videos, buy silver, buy silver. This is a good coin, this is a good coin. You know, you can only do so many silver videos, but I think what is very important is to know why you are saving, why you are putting things away. And I've been saying this since 2016, 2017. Your shit's going to hit the fan financially, and we're seeing it now. <clears throat> we're seeing it now, and I don't think we're seeing the worst of it. Now, I don't mean to come on here and do fear-mongering or play the negative game just to, just to make a video. That's not my purpose. My purpose is to motivate you, yes, to instill a little fear, a little worry, and motivate you into going out and buying silver, buying gold, buying precious metals, buying extra food. I have about a year's worth of food. I calculated for about two people. Year's worth of food for about two people. Now, this food was bought at yesterday's prices. I bought this food, prepared it for long-term food storage, the Mylar bags, the oxygen absorbers, the you name it. And I bought it. I've been, I've been putting food on the shelves, long-term food supplies on the shelves since... Heck, 2000 and, I don't want to over exaggerate this. We'll just say 2012. And that's a pretty accurate year I started prepping. A lot of my food on the shelves are guaranteed good for 25 years. And even when they start to go bad, the slightly bad food, the slightly, a food that's degraded, a, a, a food is that's a food that's gone past its, its uh, expiration date doesn't mean that's its cutoff valve. That is its bad date. No, it just loses nutrient density. It loses some of its nutrients and that sort of thing. But it's still better than going without. You know, it, it truly is. So I, I think I got about another. Another 10 years, we'll just call it 10, 15 years left on that long-term food supply to where I have to rotate it, meaning consume it, replace it with another, with more. Anyhow, I want to talk a little bit about the news in hopes that it will motivate you into looking forward to this silver crash. And that's what I'm calling it. It will be a silver crash. In the news. The regime that is in office right now <coughs> is putting forth a few bills. I love it how he says when running for office that he's not going to increase anybody's taxes, and he and he keeps their they keep their promise. But what they do is they drive up the cost of other items that you require, and attached to those other items are taxes, sales taxes. He's going to, um, gas is another example. 
drives up the cost of gas, you got federal and state taxes attached to that. But he is not going to. He see he can blame other companies for doing it. No, that's the gas companies. That's that, that's fries and that's bashes and that's you know Publix food, uh, you know grocery stores. That's not me. That's them. It's the war in the Ukraine. It's not me. It's them. By the way, you want to know why he has not really put an effort into helping Ukraine? You want to know why? Because election time is coming. They need something to blame the economy on. See, before the war, there was it was it was clear as day that it was his fault. Now that the war is here, oh, it, it, it's it's them. It you know that's them. You know, so he wants to prolong this war as long as possible. That's what it's all about, plain and simple. Bam. So what is? You know, I, I get off on these tangents. He wants to do more childhood subsidies, child care subsidies. What does that mean? It means all the other people have to pay that's what a subsidy is they take your money and pay for child care not that they're not already doing it I mean how much more do we need to subsidize for just child care you can apply for free child care if your finances are approved I mean what I'm trying to say is if you're if you don't meet the threshold for being able to pay for your own child care they'll subsidize it they'll offer you free subsidies and whatnot so it's already subsidized to some point now they want to do more and what is this again it's not about the children it's really not about helping those children and don't get me wrong I love kids it's not even about helping the parents it's about enticing those parents because most, I said most, most parents who need child care help are younger. They're 40 years and younger. I would, I would even venture to say 30 years or younger. He's trying to buy their votes. That's all it is. That is all it is. And it's the same with the the student loan, we promise to pay off your student loan. Always, about a year before, year or two before election time, it, it, it comes it, it cycles. The promises of what we're gonna pay for you. You go back several years, several presidents, all right, several presidents, go back three presidents. That same cycle keeps repeating itself. Student loan debt, student loan debt. Pay for this, pay for that, free college. I'm gonna ask you something. They keep saying, we're gonna make college free. Then who pays for the teacher? The pro I'm sorry, the professor. Who pays for the professor to come in and teach that class? Will the teacher be mandated to come in? Will professor be mandated to... Um... You see what happens when I don't have coffee? I have no freaking train of thought, no. Will, will the professor be mandated to come to teach for free? So if not, who pays him? If it's not the student, who pays him? It's everybody else. Everybody else will pay for that electricity run to that classroom, for the parking lot attendance, to the maintenance of the colleges and the schools and whatnot. Everything it takes to run that building called a college, every thing will be paid by you. Not just the education, but the maintenance of that building, the electricity, the air conditioning, the restriping of the parking lots, the, the fixing of the potholes around the campus, the books, the computers, everything everything that is required to maintain the business called college will be mandated by the taxpayers the teachers the professors the police the campus police 
So there's no such thing as free. It's just an illusion. That word is an illusion, and it's an attempt to buy those votes, those college-going students. Again, where is that age? Most of that age falls 30 years and younger. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a fool. I know people up to 40 and 50 go to college, but the bulk of the students are 30 years and under. He's trying to buy that younger, dumber vote. I'm sorry to say dumber because not, not all, not all of the students who are young are dumb. But let's face it, they lack life knowledge. They lack knowledge of living. They lack the knowledge of taking care of themselves and the knowledge of other people. Because when you're out in the work force, you start to learn about people themselves. When you're in school, everybody's your friend, your buddies, your party partners, name it. Anyhow, I want to let you go. I want you all to wait for this crash. Do not sell your silver. My phone is just going off. That work phone. Do not sell your silver. Do not sell your gold, even though you know there's a crash coming. Hold out. Keep that silver in your safe, because you don't know when the price falls if you'll be able to replace the silver that you sold in order to save yourself from the crash. Remember what happens the last the, what happened the last time. I remember. Silver fell from like $21 all the way to like $15. Everybody was able to buy silver for about six hours. Then it was pretty much sold out everywhere. So just remember those words. Take care.